Alert the squad. Alert the squad. Alert the squad. I'm still going to start with the dance hall break. Ting-a-ling-a-ling, school bell a ring, knife and fork a fight for dumpling, booyaka booyaka, shove a wrong kid, na 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 na. Okay, I'm good now. Um, <laughs> that was a little, that was a little disappointing, I'm not going to lie. I was all ready and then it was oh. just... I let you down? You did, just a little can bit. I, can the DJ, can this is like, select the bring it back! <laughs> Ting-a-ling-a-ling, school bell a-ring, knife on fall, the fight for dumpling, booyaka booyaka, a shovel from king. I wish I knew the words. Yeah, I can help you there. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is the that's the sexy and the not so sexy. The, um, Spiritually challenged and and the stay woke people who really are woke and who are woke. Um, <laughs> the uh, the beautiful people and the uh, beautiful people. There are no ugly people. <laughs> Message. Okay. Um, <laughs> well. Asterisks, there may be some um, ugly people that are ugly on the inside. You know what I mean? So, um, <laughs> what we um, typically, um, I start off, but can you please tell these people who you are? Yes, I am Lauren Keeler, aka Lil Key. Do you realize that our last episode? I didn't, it was the first episode in like 11 that I didn't refer to you by your alter ego name, low key. And I was, and I felt the way about that because I was just like, if you didn't call me, I don't even care really. Sorry that I wasted your time with that. You know, (laughs) you know, it's really not that serious. You can call me. Lamont, you can call me Anthony, you can call me Graffiti, you can call me Blue. Okay. It's whatever is whatever. Are you cut from that cloth, Lauren? I am. Okay. I am. I appreciate you like owning up to it, but I didn't even notice because oh. whatever you call me, I know it's in love. Oh. So I didn't even notice, but speaking of love, <laughs> you know what we're talking about today is keeping it sexy in the confines of a relationship. We're talking about how to keep things sexy. What are you, as usual, I always <laughs> ask you for your gut. What, are, what is your gut when I say um, keeping it sexy? Um, I think finding a way to stay connected with your partner and like attracted and keep, keep some of the the excitement and the things that connected you in the beginning, like there, right? you know, it could be like doing something fun together, snuggling, cuddling, going out on a romantic date, like just finding ways to keep it okay. where it's like, Oh, I'm still in love with, you know, he, she, they, right. But, okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like that's my babe. And we've been together for this long or that long. I don't, I think it's about like, Yes, yeah, finding a way to stay connected on that romantic level. Okay, no, I, I, think, I think what you just said is the foundation of everything I'm getting ready to say. <laughs> I'm fitting to talk crazy right now. Okay, I'm ready for that. Though. Okay, now, um, as typical, I'm, 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 I'm an artist. Ooh. I'm very sensitive about my feet. Okay. So, before I go to the connection... I got to take you on the poet, in my poet brain, to the point I'm trying to make. I got to take you on a journey to tell you what I'm trying to do. Um, connectivity is key, and a lot of people get disconnected, keeping it sexy, as, 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 especially when it pertains to sex. Okay? Now, 
we have our belief systems and all of that stuff, but that, that our belief systems are where our sexual hang-ups come from. You follow me so mm -hmm. far? Okay, so now let's say from a man's perspective, he in his heart loves this woman and he wants to do all of this freaky stuff with this woman and keep it sexy. He wants to really try, but his belief system and, and, and often some of our notions are more false than they are true. They're true to us, but it doesn't mean it's the absolute truth. Mm -hmm. um, he may think that I love this woman, but I want to do stuff that is kind of in line with the aphrodisiacs of power. I find sexual gratification and degradation and other things. I need to choke you out. I really need to bang you out like you're a thoughty thought thought. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I get off on that. You know what I mean? But yeah. I can't do I've I've been in the circles with men and men will talk like that. Dude, I can't do that type of shit with my wife. Did they ask her? Connection. And now we have come full circle. I want the type of connection. Mm -hmm. And I actually believe I have that. Is where nothing is Yeah? I can't hear. Oh shit. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Pause. Oh, you doing that again? Damn. I'm not starting all the way over. Mic check, mic check. Mic check, mic check. Hold on a second. Mic mic check. Mic check, can you... I can mic hear. check, mic check. Can you hear it? Yeah. Okay. I want the type of connection, and I believe I have that, to where nothing is off limits. That's the ultimate connection, and that's why I said your point is ultimately what I'm trying to make. Mm -hmm. And some, And on the other side of that, I just can't throw guys under the bus being male is obviously my point of reference but I am friends with and I have been friends with females over the years females fascinate me I just love to be quiet in a room full of females and just listen to y'all talk and what y'all talk about and how y'all talk about it it's, it's amazing especially for a guy who writes romance novels well can I tell you something okay. you're not even getting the juiciest stuff because we're trying to keep it cute while you're around just so you know duly noted just so you know so <laughs> so a female may have a different notion too and there may be some things she really wants to get in, you know what I mean, that she might not bring to a man because she feels like he may look at her some type of way. And I'm giving male and female examples, but I have many friends that are on all kinds of sides of all kinds of fences, you know what I mean? So you take, I'm just giving the male, female, Example right now is heterosexual is what I am, mm -hmm. and but love is love, and that's that's what it is. But yeah, and she she may not say to her partner, "Hey, I really like this," for fear of being judged and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I believe, and and some people want to have that experience, and if and if you want to keep secrets, I believe I don't think there's a relationship out there that doesn't have a secret. Oh, I think... To be honest... I think on some levels, you, you have to have secrets in any relationship. Like, you, like whether it's, like, a, a brother-sister, okay. a husband-wife, mother-daughter. Okay. Like, I think that there are certain people that you, you share levels of yourself with, but okay. we're not the same person with every single person, we're always kind of, you know what I'm saying? No, like, I, I totally agree with that. There are certain, now some people, well, this is a, such a fascinating conversation. <laughs> that goes in line with another podcast we could do talking about um, should your partner be your everything? Because I believe that as much as you love the one you are with, mm -hmm. And as, as in line as the two of you are, 
there is probably an outsider that can give one of you something a bit more effectively than your partner is. Mm -hmm. Some people just hit you in a certain spot or just have a certain vibration about them or a knowledge base, experience level, wisdom, energy, whatever. Right. Maybe a combination of all of those that they could bring to you that, that your partner just doesn't have. Doesn't mean they're not the greatest partner ever. Exactly. You know what I mean? But they but they don't they just don't have that that thing. And you can't be everything to everybody either. Like that's the thing. Like I have some friends that are like, how how do you have so many different friends? And I'm like, because I'm able to be myself in certain ways with around certain people. You know, there's people that feed my ratchetness. There's people that feed my my uh, soulful spiritual side. There's people that feel my, I just want to have fun and wild outside, be okay. adventurous. So, you know, I, I don't put it on one friend to be my everything. Just okay. like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't want to do that to them. And for like relationships, I think the men in my life, they've, al they've always kind of been jealous of my relationships with other people. But I'm like, you don't want to do everything I want to do. Inter interesting, <laughs> you know, and some partners get on it like that, right? Yeah. yeah some partners would be like, we're talking about, a real quick pause, <laughs> we're talking about keeping it sexy. <laughs> and um, this is Lauren Keeler, a.k.a. Low Key. I am the novelist of the poet Lamont Anthony Wright, a.k.a. Graffiti Blue. Welcome. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you clicked on this one. And for that, we thank you. Um, there are... Well, let me... I got a question. Yes. You said connection earlier. Mm -hmm. Is that a part of how you keep it sexy? Is that kind of meaning like do you leave breadcrumbs and be like, okay, you, you we're together for this long or you proved yourself worthy. Let me give you a little nugget about me. Let me let me be a bit more vulnerable. Daddy. And you know what I mean? Is that is that a part of keeping it sexy for you by peeling back the layers slow? Yeah, nice. I think so. And okay. just like I'm very cerebral, so like if you connect with me like, here, like right everything here. else is just like let's go. So like straight up. So for me, it's kind of like I don't I don't know like a a nice game of, of chess where we're like making conscious moves and, and okay. that yeah like that's that's how I like to keep it sexy. Okay, just, just to let you know, like that whole spiel you gave me, uh -huh. I'm going to be playing smooth operated by Shadi in the background. That was bravo, bravo, and I and I and I agree with that. I think once. As you, as you, I think as you do. I think once those trust barriers are, are broken down, or and, and and we learn to trust each other more, I think those are the most beautiful uh, relationships. When it's just like I take you as you are, mm -hmm. and you know, and we're helping each other without question, you know, and grow or whatever. But I really take you as you are, and once people get to those trust milestones and then you know I mean that 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 confidence and that effort is just more there mm -hmm. you know what I mean they just kind of let your head down and then the sexy really ramps up you know what I mean into something really mind-blowingly ladies and gentlemen boys and girls and do that let me fucking tell you this hear my words that beginning sex is you think that shit is dope you think that shit is is as good as it gets the 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 beginning lustful stage let me tell you something <laughs> that is not as good as it gets <laughs> sorry <laughs> that was funny right it was i just thought of jim Carrey. Right? <laughs> that is certainly not as good as it gets mm -hmm. after that goes and if you reach a level where you guys are pretty confident that you know you guys are for each other 
right? And you guys are not really, I mean, there's, there's secrets there that don't matter. You follow what I'm saying? You know, what you keep in your diary, your, your innermost personal mm-hmm. light or dark, whatever you want to keep to yourself, just, that's just between you and God. But outside of that, you know what I mean? Everything's pretty much on the table. Right. You feel me? Ooh, that's a different slide. It's a different slide. It's a different slide. I concur, sir. I yes. concur. You know. I'm in total agreement with that. And gosh. When, oh. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't even, yeah. When you, when you actually recognize the difference, it's like, what the hell was I doing before that? Like, okay. Like, I was just playing. Well, I... I was just playing. Now right. it's like, right, woo. right. We're talking about keeping it sexy, people. Mm-hmm. Um, to add to that, I do want to throw in gifts giving and love languages. Yeah. Um, we're talking about keeping it sexy. You know, it, um, a lot of times a partner may say, damn, I wish whomever would bring me more flowers or be more random, <clears throat> spontane- um, spontaneous with, with gift giving. I don't see anything wrong with the di- desire to want that. However, I think that someone should make sure if that is what they desire to make sure that is a love language that someone could speak Mm -hmm. because people give gifts in odd ways some dudes will wash will take 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 their lady's car get it completely detailed get the oil changed get the tires rotated have it washed, waxed, vacuumed, and beautiful, sparkling, and a chick will look him dead in the eye and be like, the fuck, that, what, what I need that for? Mm-hmm. It's a car. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And this dude feels a way because he's just like, damn, in his mind, he was going a well above and beyond because that's the language that he speaks, mm-hmm. right? right? You know, by that same token, if he talks like that but doesn't really buy flowers and she wants flowers, then she's looking at him and now she feels away. Damn, flowers are only what uh, a dozen roses is what twenty five dollars. You couldn't give me a dozen. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You couldn't get it. You know that should be established through some sort of dialogue, trust, communication. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Connectivity. Right? I've had that. I've had that um, conversation with past partners. Oh, where it's like, what's your love language? This is mine. Okay. Like, you got to tell me sometimes what you need because, like, I'm still getting to know you. You're still getting to know me. Like, we got to have that. And there were times where, like, I saw that something was missing. So I'd be like, okay, team meeting. Wow. Like, what's going on? Wow. Okay. Is it something personal or is it something within the relationship? Like, let's talk about it. Because if it's something personal, I want to support you through it. How are you dealing with it? You know, but if it's within us, like, we got to have a dialogue. We got to have a conversation about, like, are we going to try to fix it? Or is it something where it's, like, we're separating? Wow. Okay. Because, like, you know, I, I've seen people just stay, like, unhappy and stagnant. And they're not communicating. They're not saying, like, this is what I need. Can you provide this? No, a, a closed mouth doesn't get fed. A, a, a um, closed fist can hold no blessing, can receive no blessing. Right. You know, and, and that really that really needs to uh, happen. One of the... Be, be. <laughs> the greatest relationships know how to have the uncomfortable conversation. You know what I mean? Some of these conversations, it's hard to have them. And you know if you take it there, somebody's going to be freaking butthole hurt. Mm -hmm. You know, but better a little bit of pain now than a lot of pain later. My personal philosophy still might not help you 
immediately talk about the things you need to talk about, but the best lives are lived when people face what they need to face. Mm-hmm. Honestly and truthfully. Indeed, indeed. Mm-hmm. And we're, before we close though, we talked about the spontaneity, love mm-hmm. languages, and we gave an example of flowers, mm-hmm. right? For the ladies, I have to give an example. I have to throw my brother's a bone out there. <laughs> How spontaneous, how spontaneous do you recommend the ladies be with their long lingerie game? Lingerie, how often? Just because he didn't get a promotion, he didn't get a raise. Hell, he might not have bought you flowers in quite some time. But you're at the nonetheless, you're at the top of the stairs Can in Victoria secretions. <laughs> Can I say something to that? <laughs> it is good to know a schedule about, or, you know, like, let's just talk about it. Let's negotiate. You put down a number, I put down a number, and we see what happens. You, you feel me? That's but, funny. I should never drink when you talk <laughs> because you're going to say something. You're going to say something that makes me choke. Um, but I've had situations where I, like, I always thought that every man wanted a woman in lingerie, like heels, lingerie, like full makeup, like big long hair. And most men have complimented me when I like was stripped of all that. Like that I was just me. Like that's when they like, so I, you know, I think it's a preference thing. It, it, it really, and that's a great word. We'll close in a minute. But yes, it is a preference. Yeah. And, you know, depending on what's going on in somebody's life, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, um, that, that could be a recipe for disappointment, you know, for this. And it happens on both sides of the aisle. Mm-hmm. You know, he or she is waiting at home for you with no warning, and they're ragingly horny, ragingly. And they're just like, fuck it. This is my husband, this is my wife, whatever. I'm going to take what's mine. When they get here, it's on like popcorn in the storm that keeps you warm. I'm ready to go. And, you know, you get home and she's at the top of the steps in red long lingerie. Or your husband is sitting there standing at attention, butt ass naked in front of the TV. You know what I mean? You know, giving you one of these. You know, with his baby on, right? <laughs> and you just, it, it's like the worst day you ever had at work. You guys didn't communicate or anything like that. It's the worst day you had. The last thing you want to do is is have it. Some people, some people would turn that down. Not everybody, you know what I mean, would, <laughs> would, would tell their husband or wife no in that situation. You know what I mean? But there are people that are like, Ew. So that it, it wherever their relationship is at, I recommend. I mean, it is a preference, like you said before. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would recommend that not necessarily a tit for tat, but a for fat. But a good schedule is just monthly to me, mm-hmm. where one partner is the aggressor. But one day of the month, like you know, we're doing something special on me I I am the pleaser you are the pleasey you are the receiver whatever okay you know and then the other partner catches the following month you know what I mean and if you guys talk about it and work that out and then to say you know if, if you guys want to guys want to make sure you're in the mood then you just give that person a card you know what I mean and say you got one horny day card or where I'm just your sex slave or whatever for example Mm -hmm. for the day Mm -hmm. you got the whole month of February to decide when you want to cash this in okay you let me know when you're ready and give them give them the card and then they may give you a call I could get with that you know could you get with that and as a recommendation again you do what you want to do but that's he, like, I think you should, part of, I think sexy is keeping it fun and light. So I think it's like not, 
Okay. Spent just like really, I think people get into this. It has to be this way or it has to be that way. Right. And I think like dressing up, yeah, that's great. Going out and like hitting on each other. I think all of that's fun. Sending dirty text messages, like, yeah, like I, I think that's just like date each other. Mm, you said fun. Mm-hmm. You said light. And when you said that, it reminded me of a Mary J. Blige song called Slow Down, The Loving Ain't Going Nowhere. Mm-hmm. And I think, to your point, I think a lot of people, to elaborate on the point you made, I think a lot of people um, feel this enormous rush. You know what I mean? I'm just like, that's your partner. Mm-hmm. That's, your, that's your lady. That's your man. That's your husband. That's your wife. The loving ain't going nowhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you don't have to have the best freaking ep ever conceive, you know what I mean, where you went so hard, you know what I mean, you just had the best episode of your life. It's, 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 the, the journey is important here, you know what I mean? You know, but if you having a really, really, really great, connected, carefree, safe, vigorous go at it, <laughs> Consistently, yeah. Dude, that's that's you 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 doing better than most of the population. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. So that's that's my thoughts. <gasps> Anything you want to say what, before we close, dear? Before we get out of here, keep it sexy, folks. We're talking about keeping it sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like that? <laughs> you little idiot. That's a good enough read. Low key said to keep it sexy. So if somebody <laughs> wants to drop their draws because you said so. I think that's I think that's keeping it sexy. It's cuffing season. That's a good good it's, yes. It's, it's cuffing season. Yes, it's starting to get a little nippy. I pulled the pea coat out. Pull the oh peacoat out. Put the pea coat in the cleaning. Oh it's getting there. Oh I'm letting the I'm letting the side face grow back again. Oh and keep that chill off of off of a grill. I took a chance with my Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, do and do that's the sexy and the Little Lauren Keeler, probably the best female podcast in the game. Wow. I'm watching some podcasts, and there are some powerful wise chicks out there that they don't have any sense of sensibility. They don't know how to bring it back around. They don't give the alley oops that you give. You make my job easy. I'd be reverse layup in and dunking back here. I am, I am Vince Carter in like. 2004. Who's that? <laughs> He's old. <laughs> Is that that's basketball, right? That's basketball. Oh, okay. Then sanity. Um, and he, it doesn't matter. Okay. He's a prolific. Uh, let me come up to. Oh uh, gosh. Um, Le- <laughs> I don't know LeBron or is LeBron Labyrinth? too old to? No. Okay. I know LeBron. He just won a championship. Can I? Um, I know Man Vaughn is happy. The Lakers actually won. The Lakers is, is a hell of a franchise. It man. is. It really is. You know, Wilt, freaking Magic, Kareem, Shaq. If I were into sports like that, Kobe, I would be into the Lakers. LeBron, that's crazy. It ain't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they had a squad, man. They they always bring that's some the big names. Show. Congratulations to the Late Show. Congratulations to Mirror of Minds. Doing big things. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we are out. Okay. <laughs> Appreciate you. Alert the squad. Alert the squad. Alert the squad. Alert the squad.